Hey friends, looking for some great business content other than right here on Accelerate? Then check out C-Suite TV and watch in-depth interviews with business content for C-Suite leaders and entrepreneurs, including an interview with me, your favorite podcast host. And it's all on demand. Watch and get insider secrets on demand by going to csuitetv.com. That's c-suitetv.com. Business insights on demand. Okay, let's do the show. It's time to accelerate. Hey, friends, this is Andy. Welcome to episode 470 of Accelerate, the sales podcast of record, where I hold in depth conversations with today's leading experts in sales, marketing, and leadership six days a week. So, a couple of items before we meet today's guest, Doug Sandler. If you like the show, it really helps us out as we talk about almost every day as you subscribe to Accelerate. So, please be sure to go to iTunes or wherever you listen to the podcast, maybe the podcast app on your phone. Subscribe to the show. While you're there, please leave us a review. So I'm excited to be joined on the show today by, as I mentioned, Doug Sandler. Doug's a blogger, host of his own podcast, which is called Nice Guys on Business, and author of the very good book, Nice Guys Finish First. So you probably sense a theme with Doug, which is that being nice is the path to getting ahead in life and in business. In fact, Doug is actually one of the most authentically nice and generous people I've met in the past several years. So I'm interested in exploring with him what's so nice about being nice, or what's so good about being nice, and also isn't nice under attack today to some degree? It seems like it is. So let's jump into it. Doug Sandler, welcome to Accelerate. Hey, thanks, Andy. Welcome to uh, welcome to yet another amazing episode of your show. I love your show. Thanks oh, for uh, thank you very including much. Me. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and I enjoy being a guest on your show as well. It's time to do it again. It's God, that's been a long time. It, it, it the time evaporates. You figure after three hundred and some odd episodes, they it would uh, they all get condensed. I I forget where I forget where I'm going tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I have that feeling. I've just come in off the road, and actually on vacation last week. Where yeah, I really lost myself in vacation this time. And I re this was one of the hardest reentries I've had um, in quite some time. It was well, I'm, such I'm a looking good vacation. Forward. I'm heading on vacation on Sunday, so I'm hoping to have that same feeling when I yeah. come back. <laughs> yeah, no, it, was, it was great. All right, so here's a question for you. You talk about nice, you nice guys finish first, your book, you co-host nice guys on business. What's so nice about being nice? I just think it's an easy way to go through life. You know, for me, it's it's a it's a mentality. You know, we had a, a little conversation before we hit the record button. It's you know just about about uh, optimistic and positive attitude, and I think that part of being nice is just uh, having an optimistic and positive attitude. And I've just always been that way my entire life. I maybe be as as the youngest of of uh, of with one of the brothers, so, so two kids in my in my direct family, but stepbrothers and stepsisters. I am the youngest of all of them, and for me. You know, if I wasn't a positive guy, I would get beaten up a lot as a, kid, <laughs> as a kid. So I was always a very positive guy. And sometimes you have to push through that. You have to, I don't mean to say fake it till you make it, but you know, you have to maintain a positive decorum. You know, people don't like, people don't like to hear you when you're in a crappy mood. So for me, just to, to be nice, to be kind, to be, um, uh, you, you know, po- positive, optimistic, they all go hand in hand. So nice as a survival strategy. Maybe so. Maybe that's what it started out with originally. And then I discovered the the nicer I was, the more that people wanted to hang out with me. And 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 I hate saying this in any kind of um, pessimistic way, but the nicer you are, the less you need to know. <laughs> because you know, you you end up you end up just being surrounded by people that want to help you. And that's really how I've gone through my entire life. I, I never want to be the smartest person in the room. I always which is rare anyway, but I but I always want to be the guy that walks into the room that's that's uh, that I can fill with my smile or fill with my positive thoughts and positive attitude and get whatever I want as a result of, of that. Now, is that, is that um, some sort of agenda? I, maybe, it, maybe people could perceive it as that, as being nice as an agenda. Nice is just how I am. And I think that life is way, way too complicated to go through it anything other than nice. So what is nice? I mean, that, I mean, if we use the word. I mean, we toss it out. and guess you look at directory.com or dictionary.com, excuse me, and 10, 11 different definitions of it. But in your mind, what, what is nice? So when you're saying nice guys finish first, what are nice guys on business? What, what is a nice guy? 
Yeah, it's funny. There's a there's a quote that I wrote in the in the front of my book and the beginning of my book on chapter one. If I screw up the quote, I apologize to to Gary Shandling's heirs. But uh, he said something like, if, "If you don't think nice guys finish first, then you don't know where the finish line is." And for me, it really is just about doing the right things, uh, not necessarily even at the right time, but doing the right things even when people aren't watching you. It's um, it's it's making that extra call. It's it's uh, going above and beyond expectations. It's showing empathy the compassion, showing gratitude. Here, here's a good one. It's, it, it's an example of finding, catching someone doing something right rather than catching some, somebody doing something wrong. And uh, I think that people respond to that a lot better. Uh, you know, the, the old adage, you get more from honey than you do from, from vinegar. Uh, it really is true with being nice. If you're just a nice person, show gratitude, show empathy, show compassion. Uh, you know, you do all the proper things. Now, that doesn't even mean to say anything about how how does that work in business? But that's just how you are as a as a person. If you can be that type of person, other people will want to be around you. They want to associate with you. They'll want to refer people to you. They want to be around you, and and that's a good thing. So it's nice under attack. I mean, we're, we're you know living fractious times. So it's no <laughs> no surprise to anybody. But there seems to be in this this increase in sort of mean spiritedness that we're seeing certainly in, in the, the public sphere and yeah, you know, arguably that, that people are being rewarded for it. I don't know if there's any more of a prevalence of people not being nice. I think it, there's a lot more exposure to people's critical comments because social media exposes everything to everyone. So where somebody might have done something behind the scenes before, made a complaint or said something negative to somebody directly to them or to their manager or to somebody in their organization, now they're spreading it on social media. So I think that we see it a lot more now, uh, which may be the case. I mean, you could be 100% right. There might be more of a proliferation of uh, of that in, in mainstream world that People are not nice, but uh, I can't imagine running an organization any other way other than showing those things that we just talked about as as being nice. And for me, it's it's the right thing to do as well. Well, I was talking to somebody that that uh, an expert on on leadership, and she was making the comment that somebody had mentioned to her the on the advent and the, or the aftermath of the election is that suddenly it's like back in the eighties. It's like greed is good again. Yeah, I, I think that I mean, I'm not a very political guy, but I look at the I look at what's going on in um, in in politics now. And I say, again, I'm looking at this from my positive spin. I'm like, OK, well, the Democrats have had their shot at this for for eight years. Why don't we see what this guy's got to offer? And yeah, he's he's not my candidate, but he is a candidate and he is our president now. And without being political, I would say, why don't we see what what really happens? Let's can we just put down the criticism just for a moment? I mean, I'm not saying don't stand up for what you believe in. If he's if there's a if there's a policy or or something that's he's putting in place and you and you don't believe in it, then absolutely, you know, you have the right to protest or you have the right to go against what he has to say. But the for the sake of just criticizing him for for his stupidity on Twitter or his things that he's doing on social media. I don't know. Okay, let the guy do what he wants to do. Let's see how it works out. And uh, if it doesn't work out well, let's get rid of him. You know, it's why is that such a bad thing? It's not like, uh, you know, I looked at my health care bill um, and and I just see it go up from 500 to 800 to 1100 dollars in the course of a couple of years and I'm thinking well this isn't working and that wasn't created by by uh, by Trump so again I'm not I'm not well, yeah, supporting without, right without getting into his policies or, or Chris yeah. I was thinking more about the you know the social media aspect which has certainly seemed to open the door is that you know if you have somebody that can say anything, the most objectionable things, you know, without um, consequence, that, that it seems to be, that's what I thought, nice being under attack. It now seems to be giving people permission to say some of, again, some of the most objectionable things coming from people that maybe just had, you know, always believed these things, but had kept it suppressed just for the, the, <laughs> in the public interest of saying, yeah, let's, let's keep our discourse sort of up above a certain level. Well, and let somebody that wants to be negative or critical about anything you do, and again, we'll put politics aside and just get back to business or just get back to our personal lives for a moment. Let people that have negative things to say or do, um, let them show their uh, their true character. And 
I, I think that in the end, again, let's go back to that Gary Shandling quote. If you don't think nice guys finish first and you don't know where the finish line is, I think that somebody that uses, um, you know, mean, if we say that's the opposite of nice being mean or critical as, um, as their, as their MO, um, it's, it's only a matter of time before people discover their true character. And for me, um, it doesn't mean I'm not a good negotiator. It doesn't mean that I'm not a, a good leader. You know, it doesn't mean that there is any weakness in, in my character. I think that oftentimes people confuse being nice with a sign of weakness and it is just the opposite of that. It's, it's the way that I get to the ends that I'm trying to get to, which is success. Mm-hmm. And that's, and that's what I use. I use nice as my, as my trait or I use nice as my, as my MO. And that's just how I am. So how can you know if you're not being nice or if you're not nice, right? I mean, is this something objective or is it purely subjective? Uh, I think that, I think that I mean, like beauty, I know beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I mean, is nice sure. in the eye of the beholder? Sure. Are you, are you accomplishing the things that you set out to accomplish in your life? If you did and you, and you are nice, then you can put nice on your, on your list of reasons why you've accomplished what you've needed to accomplish. Listen, there's plenty of people that are out there and I work with them every day. I walk into organizations that have a management uh, team that is, uh, that is, uh, let's categorize them as not nice. They don't want to show praise because they feel as though if they do that, their people will start asking for raises. I can't believe I, I work with an organization as a consultant, and uh, their customers on a routine basis would send in thank you notes for uh, for some great support. And the management team made a um, it made a a decision not to share those notes with the people for fear that they would ask for raises. <laughs> I'm like, you're kidding me, really? How about how about showing that so that they can feel like they've accomplished something with the course of their you know through the course of their day? So, I, you know, I don't know. I I think that nice is nice is the way to go. It's so much easier to be nice than to be a than to be a jerk about things. I, but and again, that's just the the approach that I take. I'm not saying it's the only way. It's the way that works for me, and that's the way that I teach. So um, I, I would have to say that for me, it's it's the uh, it's the it's the route to success. Okay. Well, I mean, I I, I agree. I mean, I think. Everything you said, yeah, starting with the Gary Shandling thing, but if, you know, if you think nice guys, nice guys don't finish first, you don't know where the finish line is. How can someone assess themselves, right? I mean, this is, I know people who are unconsciously not nice, right? Mm-hmm. They're not perceived as being nice. Um, so how, how does someone assess themselves for this? Because I think this is an important thing. I think it's something that you say sort of by nature, you're optimistic, but you also said on the other hand that this is, you know, being nice is a deliberate action on your part. So it requires some thought. I mean, it's become habitual for you, I know, but it's, it, at some point it wasn't. So, so how, how does a, how does someone assess themselves? Let's sort of start there and then, then working to say, okay, what are some behaviors, some habits and so on that they can work on to help them make the sort of consistent behavior on their part? Well, and that's just it. It's it's in your actions. It's in the behavior. It's in the things that you do on a daily basis. In the business world, it could be something as simple as. And again, this is not necessarily. Well, let's start with the assessment part, though. Let's how okay how how do you how do you counsel somebody? Because you, know, you write about this. You work you know with this whole idea of culture of nice, which we'll get to. How does how does an individual assess themselves in terms of really because it's how they're perceived on a routine basis? Are you showing gratitude to your staff? Now, what does that mean? Are you finding people doing the right things rather than doing the wrong things? Once you catch somebody, it's so interesting to, 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 um, as somebody that has never shown appreciation or gratitude in the workplace as a manager to, to put in their hands, the idea of showing gratitude. And you just say something like just today, I want you just to find one person within your organization that's doing something right and talk to them about it. Just ask them something about it. Oftentimes, people will come back to me and say, that made me feel so good. It made me feel like uh, it was almost selfish that I was finding somebody doing something right because it all comes back to you. So the self-analysis is the toughest thing. You know, there's this thing called mindfulness meditation, and I'm mm-hmm. not going to, you know, it, it, you, don't re- that show? Yeah, you don't realize – you don't realize that you're that you don't have a that you that there is no awareness of self until you start to think about through mindfulness meditation your breath and you start to think about 
I'm focused on where I'm sitting. I'm focused on on not clearing my mind, but just finding enough space that I'm just focused on my breath. And when I realize that I've drifted off, which we all do, mm-hmm. just come back to just come back to your breath. And in this particular case, the self analysis of of are you being nice or not? It's have you shown gratitude today? And have you shown gratitude to not only your coworkers, but have you have you said I love you today to someone? Have you reached out to show? appreciation. And again, I'm not going to get into the woo woo stuff because I mean, it's, that's a whole different level. But for me, it is really about, have you shown gratitude? Do you show appreciation? Have you returned all your phone calls? Have you returned all of your emails? Have you answered all the questions within their emails? Have you shown, um, you know, have you been on time for all of your appointments? Have you, yeah, have you reached out a couple of times and, and communicated with people that you haven't spoken to in the last 30 days? All of those things, if you do an analysis and you write down, well, no, I guess I didn't show anybody appreciation today. Well, I, I said thank you to the person as I paid my parking, you know, my parking thing on the way out the before he lifted the gate. Well, that's not the same as mm-hmm. show appreciation and ask one follow up question. Hey, I heard you were going on vacation. How, how was vacation? So you can do it. It's, it's pretty easy to do an analysis. You just have to find the parameters that work for that specific person, though. And for me, it really is all about those things that I just said, the calls and the emails and the, the text messages and, and the showing appreciation and, and touching someone that you haven't spoken to in 30 days. All of those things are a gauge of determining whether you actually are being a nice person and being able to do a self-analysis. And doing some of those things without expecting anything in return, I think that, that really sort of completes the equation, right? Because oh, a lot yeah. of times people put on their list, hey, I need to make sure I stay in touch with these people, but it's always because they want something. Well, if you look at it as these are your goals, that this is my goal. I have a program called the Nice Guy 30, and, and this program is as simple as forget what's on the other side. Forget the agenda. The agenda is for you to be nice. The, let's just say that you have this task list that you have to go through as a part of your as a part of your daily activities, and one of them is returning all your phone calls and others returning your emails, returning your text messages, being on time, over-promising and under-delivering has to be finished. You know, you got to exceed expectations um, and reach out twice a day to people that you haven't spoken to in 30 days. Those five or six things that I just mentioned, those are the action steps that you can go through in order to really create this environment of forget what you're getting in return. It's just what you're giving out because the reality of it is, and you just hit it on the head, is that do it without an agenda and and all of a sudden it becomes a lot more meaningful to you because you're trying to now accomplish some goals on your own. Yeah, and I think when we talk about in the sense of behaviors, then as, as people have to think about it context of habits right and and this is certainly a, a popular topic these days is you know a habit is a process you know there's a trigger for a certain behavior as you said it could be looking at to-do list that you know somebody that you need to contact that you haven't contacted for 30 days and you know what what process do you use then at that point i mean do you reach out to them you know what what do you what's your reward for having done that well it's it's that connection Right. It's not yeah, necessarily I, that there's anything that happens, but your reward is you get a connection with another human being. Yeah, your sort of nice quotient goes up, I'll call it. I uh, I play this game with with audiences when I when I speak to them. And one of the things I do, I wrote this uh, this post called um, uh, 24 Seconds That Will Change Your Life. And it's probably one of one of my most uh, read and shared um, uh, posts that I've written in years. And the exercise is literally the reason I call it 24 seconds, it takes the average person 12 seconds to send out a text message. So literally you send out two text messages a day through your contact list of people you haven't spoken to in the last 30 days. And you're going to get one of three responses in return. One of them is who is this? Mm -hmm. (laughs) The other response is, uh, is everything okay? And the third response that you potentially could get back in the one that we're really looking for is, Hey, thanks for reaching out. You know, we need to get together. That's the gold. That's where it's all about. And you start to see the, the reaction of, of, uh, you know, the cause and effect, the cause of, uh, of, uh, sending out this, this email, the, or this text message, the effect of building a relationship. And you start to see there's a definite relationship between being nice, meaning sending out those messages every day and the effect, which is starting to build that relationship even stronger than you already have. If you, if you're getting responses from people like, who is this? That means you haven't contacted those. If you're getting responses like, um, like, is everything okay? It means you're only reaching out to people in the event of an emergency emergency in your life. But when you start to get those, hey, thanks for connecting with me, that's the one that you want everyone to be when you start to do this on a regular basis. I've been doing this for 15 years, many more than two text messages a day. And um, the response is always, 
Hey, great hearing from you, Doug. I'm glad you, you know, I haven't, haven't talked to you in about a month or two. That's I'm happy you reached out to me. And now I get text messages. You know, you said something, I think in our, in our pre-conversation about, but how can you, how do you stay, how do you keep yourself in that positive frame of mind? Or how do you stay optimistic all the time? The way I stay optimistic is even when I'm having my crappy days, because we all have crappy days, you know, the, the bills are mounting or this expense comes up or, or the kid is complaining about whatever. I get text messages all the time from people. Hey, Doug, hope you're having a great day. XOXO. Because I've been doing it so long that people now do it back to me because they're just mimicking my behavior. So that's all a part of it. And then it, it just begets, it gets into this cycle of there's nothing but love and nice coming into my world. And that, for me, is what it's all about. It's building those relationships stronger and stronger. Yeah, you've built a – you've probably said this, but I mean this may sound corny, but you've built a network of nice <laughs> That's great. No, I never have said that. I, I love that. Can I use that? Is that okay? <laughs> I, I just I just got the domain for that. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you did network of nice. All right, it's good. <laughs> so, but I think you think about this in the context of you know we have a good portion of our audience that is you know sales professionals. That this is something you're doing that that is sort of paying it forward. Well, the um, the the sub chat the subtitle of the book, which is called "Nice Guys Finish First, That's the name of the book. It's winning customers for life by winning relationships that last, and it it is all about winning in sales and winning in business is really about winning relationships. It, it has everything and nothing to do with business. If you're a good relationship builder and you're a good person and you're a nice person, people are going to want to be around you. They're going to want to do business with you. They know like they know you, they like you. Uh, and then that trust thing, that's just a matter of you doing what you say you're going to do, which is that part of that in that nice guy 30 I was talking about is the, um, is the stop over promising and under delivering it's set real unrealistic expectations and exceed them every time instead. And that's, that's the true component that a lot of people miss is that you actually have to do what you say you're going to do. Well, yeah, because I think that's really in, in business and sales. That's, that's really what a relationship is. I mean, unless someone is your personal friend, which most people aren't in business is relationships are really performance based. So Agreed. being nice is, uh, you know, personally <laughs> nice is really important as a center part of this no like and trust. But at the end of the day, it's about points you brought out, you know, under promise, over deliver, or over promise, over deliver is you have to come through on what you say you're going to do. Absolutely. And people have choices. I mean, your customers aren't sitting around thinking, gosh, I really miss Doug. <laughs> <laughs> Doug hasn't I, called me a long time. If I've done my job <laughs> properly, they are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but not in the sense we talk about, right? You know, like, gosh, I, I wish I could talk to Doug. You know, it's, right. it's, yeah. It's great Doug's in constant contact with us or every 30 days on minimum because, yeah, he's in touch with us in case something comes up and we need his help in resolving something. You know, it's funny you, you bring that up because, Andy, that really is a part of, of an agenda that that if you if you work it right, you build a client list and you build a business that is filled with people that know, like and trust you and, you know, like and trust. And you don't have to go much further than your current book of business. I tell a bunch of companies that I consult with, uh, would you would you rather try to get a new customer or more business from the customers that you have? And it, undoubtedly, you get more money and more business from the customers you sure. already have rather than trying to, you know, because too many people are focused on price. And that's oftentimes what the new customer is focused on. And if you have a customer that understands your value, understands the importance of you building relationships with them, uh, then uh, then you, you're in a winning proposition when it comes to new business. They don't even talk about price. Oftentimes, they won't even talk about price with you because they know how valuable you are as a uh, as a partner. Well, let's talk about this. You know, extending again to the folks who are listening who are sales professionals and saying, "Okay, I think I'm nice, uh, but they have responsibility for new business development." Mm -hmm. Is how are they integrating this into their personal brand? So when they're making that first call on a on a prospect or a buyer or a first in person meeting. That, you know, the perception that, that the buyer is left with is, wow, what a nice person. Yeah. Yeah, that's what that's what you want. It, it's it's not about the especially in that first call. It's not about the business. 
I, I challenge people that to stop being in a hurry. You know, it's it's like when people go to networking and they they collect as many cards as they can, or they spend an un, ungodly amount of time with each person puking product and talking to them about all the things that they that they can do, and they walk away from that they're not having found out any information about the people that they're networking uh, with. It's the same on an initial sales call. Just go in there with the with the open opinion that you're open uh, um, attitude that you are going to actually find out more about that person, whether it's through business about their personal side, anything, just all you're trying to do is develop a relationship. The business will come. It definitely will come. And, uh, if we're all just patient about that, then, uh, then it will, it will amount to dollars in your pocket. If that's what you choose to, to make it be about. Well, I think one of the real problems that people have when it comes to this, whether it's the first meeting with the customer or it's at a networking event, some sort of social event, the way that I, my belief is the reason they default to talking about themselves is they have this yeah, you know, this could sound clinical, and it's not meant to be, but a, a fear of of intimacy, a fear of of you know actually engaging with something, thinking the other person's going to be in judgment of them, as opposed yeah, it, to yeah. just breaking that barrier down by asking an authentic question about the other person. And this is this is you know I see this in sales reps all the time. They're nervous and they think I have to establish my bona fides, my credibility with this person. So the way I do that is by talking about me because I'm afraid to ask something about them or be personal. And it's really the opposite was what they want to do is they really want to have that personal connection first. Uh, 100% agree. I, uh, I, I go to, uh, I go to a doctor recently and, um, as I'm sitting in the doctor's appointment, you know, the, 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 um, the clinician is literally asking me questions and typing them into a computer, never asking, never looking up, never mm -hmm. looking into my eyes. Uh, you know, when it's time for me to finally see the doctor, the doctor comes in and does starts doing the same thing with their laptop, not the laptop, but the, the desktop computer and never making eye contact, leaving the room a couple of times. And, and I, when, when she got up to leave the second time, I said, Hey, can I ask you a question? I said, you're really making me uncomfortable here. And, you know, I know it's a challenging thing to say, but <laughs> this is the reality of, of how, how business is too, not just in healthcare. It's, we spend so much time focused on the, the, the bits and bytes and the and the um, the specifications and and the and all of that that we don't spend enough time talking about the person so I said to the doctor I said hey you've gotten up out and gone out of the room once now now you're about to leave a second time you've sat down and typed in that computer and you haven't even made eye contact with me I said can we just have a conversation human to human like we used to when we were going to the doctor and and can you just for a second Put down your script, and, and again, I say that in a gentle way because mm -hmm. you can't, you don't mm -hmm. want to hurt anybody's feelings. But can you understand that I'm a human being sitting next to you, and I just want to have a conversation about what's going on in my life right now? And as soon as I said that, I could see that overwhelming. Oh my gosh, I've been so caught up in what I'm doing, I'm, I forgot. And she was very, very apologetic about it. So as we do the things that we do in the course of our day, whatever, whether you're a you know, a person that's selling heating and cooling systems or whether you're an IT person selling enterprise wide, uh, you know, uh, software, whatever it is, you've got to remember the person that you're dealing with is a human being and talk to them like a human being. They have kids, they have feelings, they have families, they have dogs, they have pets, they have vacations, they have all the stuff, they have bills, they have all the stuff that we have. And if you just default to any of those other than business, you'll start to develop a relationship with that person, which is paramount to anything else. They only want to do business with you if they like you. And the only reason they're going to like you is if you get away from business long enough to get them to like you. Allow them into your life and you will see that they're a huge, huge world opening to you as a potential you know, provider of services for that person. Well, and there's really another element to this. And, and Robert Cialdini talks about it in his latest book, Persuasion, which is research has shown that people, yes, they like to do business with uh, people they know, like, and trust. But actually, there's a fourth factor that he talks about is they like to do business with people they think like them. Mm, that makes sense. Yeah, that totally makes sense. So this whole idea of being nice, you know, being concerned about them, inquiring about what's going on with them, is sending the message that, you know, you're, you're truly concerned about, about them as a, person, as a person, as an individual. And that starts building this out. Well, they must like me. In the beginning, too, though, it must it, – it, sometimes it is one of those things where you have to manufacture it 
and again, I'm saying that in a non-manipulation way, but as a professional, you have to, uh, my dad always used to call it a, a sales is no, nothing more than a, than a, um, than a Broadway show put on by a psychologist. You know, we're, we're all in this, <laughs> we're all in this position where we have to try to, to develop and manufacture, uh, instant rapport with someone, which is challenging to do. I, I admit it's very challenging to do. Fortunately that, you know, being the host of a podcast with, you know, a couple of hundred, a couple of hundred interviews under my belt, you, you do. And, and Andy, you do an ex- exceptional job with this as well is very quickly. You get people to like you because you're just you're just having a conversation, and it's like just take it easy. Everything's going to be cool. I'm just going to ask you some questions. You know, you made me feel very at even as a host of a show who knows the the process. You still made sure that I understood how the process was going to work, making me feel comfortable, and that's all a part of the of the sales game. And that's a part of the business game also is getting people to uh, to to like you quickly. You, ha- you have to. Yeah, and so I wonder if one of the things that that sort of impedes people in a sales and business environment when they're talking to buyers and customers from sort of taking the step is that we use this word relationship, and it's sort of fraught with meaning, right? I mean, it, on one hand, it it implies more than perhaps what it really is, and I just wonder if there's a better word for it. I mean, to me, I, I like I like the word connection, right? You're just trying to make a connection with somebody. Yeah, relationship does sound like it's wow. This is a really long term thing, and this could be really it's complicated. Deep and, it's deep. Yeah, <laughs> right, but, right. You know, and, and that's not really what the buyers are looking for. But they're looking for this connection. Yeah, because we use the thing, you know, human to human. Yeah, yeah. This is this is what they're interested in. Can we connect? And you said you have to sort of manufacture it again, a non manipulative way. I mean. Yeah, we can go on social media, we can go on LinkedIn before we talk to somebody for the first time, we can go on their Twitter account, Facebook, we can, you know, sort of cyber stalk them a little bit, see what see what they're interested in. And that's okay. If there's because yeah, you, know, you don't want to be asking a stock question. Agreed. Agreed. You, it's uh, it's very challenging because of the ability to do so much research on everybody. It's almost like you don't want to go anywhere unprepared. You want to at least have a little bit of background. You don't want to say to a to a CMO or a CFO or any of the C level guys. So tell me about yourself. <laughs> it's like you need to know. Do a little research before you walk in there. Find out what other jobs that you had. Hey, if if somebody came to me and said. Hey, I heard that you were a, um, you know, you, you, you're represented by Washington talent agency. I, I heard that, you know, if anything that is on my LinkedIn profile, if somebody brings up to me that I don't consider that man, that guy was stalking me. That's kind of creepy. Uh, what I look at it and say, wow, that's somebody that did some research or mm-hmm. I read a couple of your, if you say to somebody, I've read a couple of your posts, I'm like, really? Or I've listened to your podcast. I'm like, you have, you know, for me, that's a big, that's a huge compliment. And Somebody that I'm willing to open up to at least a little bit more, knowing that they've done some some research. Now, that's not oftentimes the you don't have the capability to do that if you're in a networking situation. But you can ask leading questions. You can say things like anything, like oh, I, I hate going to networking. What are the things that What are the things that you don't like about networking? Because I don't like it either. You know, you can you can manufacture a <laughs> exactly. conversation with somebody. Yeah, and that's a very effective. Tactic. I somebody, actually somebody I was speaking to just a couple of days ago brought up the same example. Is yeah, just agree that that you're sharing sharing an experience, right? In this case, you're sharing your discomfort at these events, and yeah, it can open the door to a connection. Yeah, I think people love they love to see vulnerability. They love to see, and, and again, some of the cliche words of of 2017 is uh, you know they, they you show vulnerability, you show transparency, uh, you show uh, genuine you, your genuine nature, you show your true self, and that if you do that, that's I think if there's any anything that I would totally attribute the success of our podcast to, it's it's to the fact that it is literally the same conversation that I would have with my best friend as I'm on the phone. Mm -hmm. And I have those conversations with my co-host and then I develop those quick conversations that I have with guests that come on my show. And we are just, it it would just be a phone call that me and Andy are having on a, you know, on a Tuesday night. It doesn't have to be a, a, this is a, this is a stiff interview and it never comes across that way. in, in at least in my case, and the same when I listen to your show too, Andy, I mean, you have conversations with people and you probably have 10 questions in front of you. It's sometimes you're probably lucky if you get to two of them, right? Oh, most of the time, right? <laughs> right. So we're sort of at that moment in the show. Tell people about your podcast. 
The podcast, originally, I said to a best friend of mine who I've known at that point probably for, for 18 or 19 years, I said, hey, I want a way that I can get my products and my services in the hands of people that would not have otherwise um, thought of my products or services. What What do you think we should do? I'm thinking about a podcast. And he probably said, what's a podcast? And I probably said, I don't know, but I hear they're really cool. So I really never listened to a podcast before. I maybe I listened to one or two, but I never subscribed to one before I before I hosted a show. And we were originally just going to use it as another channel to promote the products and services that that I offer, which is my consulting and my speaking services. As I found out through the last two years and a couple hundred interviews and three hundred and twenty some odd episodes or three hundred and thirty, I think is today's episode number or whatever that number is. I discovered that it is now the hub of my entire business. It's the way I've built my network. Mm -hmm. It's the way that I've developed these relationships. It's the way that I've sold many of the services that I provide. Uh, it is the channel by which all other, um, all of my other channels plug into rather than the other way around. This is not the, the one of the spokes. This is actually the hub. It's called the Nice Guys on Business Podcast, and it has been uh, a, a game changer and a life changer for me over the last two years. So it's it's wonderful. It really is. Yeah, and, and both your show and this show, Accelerate, we are featured shows on the C-Suite Radio Network, which you're also involved with. Yeah, yeah. Well, interesting story about that. I, I uh, met Jeffrey Hazlett, the guy that runs the C-Suite Network, uh, maybe about a year ago, and I had him as a guest on the show. After I had him as a guest on the show, uh, I heard that he was going to be in D.C. Doing some, uh, doing some speaking. I sent an email to him, and, and we got into a conversation because I'm in the D.C. area as he was down here, and I said um, – you know, I love what you're doing with your with your uh, with your network. Have you ever considered putting together a podcast network to 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 uh, to further get other people's messages out? And he said, "Well, we're just in the process of of actually doing that." And I thought it was pretty coincidental. So I, that was the end of the conversation. I mean, I told him about my podcast. I told him about my speaking. I told him about, "Hey, it's really cool what you're doing. I love the network idea and the the community." And uh, about maybe about a month later, I think I forget if I called him or he called me. He said, you know, we're starting this network up, but we don't have anybody to run it. So, I, you know, what, what your mom always used to say, be careful what you wish for, you, you might mm -hmm, get it. Mm -hmm. So I, I said to him, well, I, you know, that'd be kind of cool. I'd be interested in that. So he's, he, we had another conversation and we decided that I was going to run this network and recruit the, the, uh, the, the teams of, of shows that, that are on it. And it has, been, um, it has been a true, again, a game changer when it comes to the world of connections. I've made so many amazing connections with the 30-some hosts that are on, these, on this network at this point. You know, we're gunning for 100 podcasts by the end of 17 and we're well on our way now. And uh, it, it has been truly a great experience for not just me, but I'm hoping for a number of the guests that or a number of the hosts that are on the network as well, the shows, because the affiliation with other guys and girls that do what we do um, is invaluable. And it is truly the um, the reason why I do it now. It's it's just amazing, this network. Yeah. So this is the C-Suite Network and people can go to C-Suite Network or C-Suite Network hyphen sweetnetwork.com learn we'll more about link, uh, we'll put the link in the show notes <laughs> yeah we'll put the link in the show notes learn more about it and then also as i said it's doug's uh, in charge of the c-suite radio network of which his podcast and this podcast accelerator one of the couple of handfuls of featured uh, shows and um, great place to go check out some great content yeah, it's uh again, it's it's great, and it is it is uh there's such a huge variety of shows. There's uh there's interview shows, there's uh, monologue shows, there's shows that are. But it's what's great about it is it really is all focused on how to improve your your business. Um, there's no comedy shows, although our show sometimes is a comedy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's 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 our variety of comedy and done in a business way. All right, well, how, give people some idea of how else they can get in touch with you, Doug. Uh, best way to do it is probably just through uh, my website, which is dougsandler.com. All my all my uh, my blog and my posts and my subscription and everything is is over there, and and uh, all the links are there as well as well as the podcast. Excellent. Well, good. Well, Doug, thanks for joining me. Hey, thanks, Andy. Thanks for having me on your show. I I very much enjoyed it. Yeah, as always, a pleasure to talk with you. And friends, thank you for spending this time with us today. And remember, come back and join us again tomorrow. And in the meantime, really appreciate it. If you take a second, go to iTunes, subscribe to this podcast, leave a review for Accelerate. We really want to hear what you have to say, whether it's good or bad, what we can do to help make this a more valuable listening experience for you. And until next time, this is Andy Paul. Good selling, everyone.